I'm Melissa Sharp. I'm a PhD student with the University of Split and Université Paris Descartes as a part of the Mirror Project. When authors writing the results of their research studies aren't clear about what they did, then it's hard to judge the quality of the work. And so readers, like doctors and patients, don't know what to do with that information. This means that we have to keep asking the same questions again and again, wasting time, wasting money, and creating research waste. So my project aims to reduce that waste by looking into the writing process and what educational resources are currently available to authors. Hopefully, with better educational resources available, the writing will improve and the quality will improve, and then readers, like doctors and patients, will be able to integrate that information into patient care and health policies. Improving the quality of reporting is a complex task, so I'm trying to break down the problem into pieces to tease out the different factors that are in play. So first, I'm looking at a bird's eye view of things. I'm looking at the environment that authors are working in. So when authors are completed with the study, they will write up the results in the form of a manuscript and submit it to a journal. And these journals can support uh, the use of writing tools or educational resources. So I'm looking to see um, what sort of frequency is of support for these, these items. And this is important because a key factor in increasing the quality of the work is that all of the players in the system recognize that it is a problem and that there are solutions to fix it. And then in addition to this, I'm looking at the quality of the tools themselves, as there's quite a few out there. Next, I'm looking at authors and their behaviors themselves. So I'm looking at uh, one tool in particular called Strobe, which is a writing checklist for observational studies. And I'm asking authors directly what they think of it. So what they think of the usability and the format and the content to see uh, sort of what problems they may be having currently and potentially ways to fix it. And then lastly, I'm using all of this information about both the environment that the authors are working in and their own behaviors to create an educational intervention which includes resources that authors can use when planning and reporting research. My project requires a lot of different skills and tasks. And one major benefit of the Mirror Network is its multidisciplinary nature. So I have a core team that supports me, made up of a supervisor, a co-supervisor, and a mentor who all have different areas of expertise. This means that I can always ask questions to the right people, and then in addition to this core team, I have the strength of the network behind me. Um, coming from the States, there really is not a comparable experience to this. Over the course of three years, I get to study in four different countries and workplaces, and I'm learning new things every day about the world around me and myself. And these kind of experiences and things you just really can't learn in a classroom. And then in addition to these intangible skills, Mirror has given me the opportunity to attend conferences and workshops all over the world and really solidify and expand my epidemiological skills through webinars and workshops and meetings. And of course I get to share this experience with 14 other students uh, being a PhD student, especially one that travels all the time, uh, is not always the easiest thing, but I know that with their support and kindness and wisdom, that we're always there for each other and we've really become a fantastic international family.